In 1945, Germany, right after the war, a ghostly-looking and malnourished Max goes back home looking for his wife and son. A different family has taken over living in his house, and it is made clear that he wasn't welcome there anymore. Helpless, he goes to the abandoned synagogue where he sketches an image of his family on the wall. A fellow Jew, Avraham, speaks to him about how he had captured death in a cloth and then suggests to Max that they should head to Tarvizio from where they can go to Palestine. On their way through the woods the next day, they come across the Jewish brigade of the British army and meet Michael, the team's leader. Once they reach the base, Max immediately puts up a picture of his family on the bulletin board hoping for news. Seeing this, Michael realizes the pain he has been through, and late that night, he takes him to the house of a former Nazi, Josef Krauss. Shockingly, after getting a list of other Nazi officers who worked in concentration camps from him, team members, Menashe and Yoachai sentence him to death for being responsible for the end of numerous innocent lives and finish him off. Having seen the portrait Max put up, a woman meets him the next morning. She tells him that she has seen them, but through the recounting of her memories of the Nazi horror, Max realizes that he has lost his family. Determined to do something about the ruthlessness his family was put through, Max refrains from getting on the convoy to Palestine with the others that night, and Avraham gives him his jug of death before leaving. Speaking to Michael then, Max asks to be included in the secret agenda, saying that he deserved to get his revenge. This is how his journey begins, where he poses as the British military police with the rest. Yoachai and Menashe inform him of the rules they follow during these operations. They always have more than one source of intel on a suspect, and they do not execute anyone in the presence of family. As they work through the list that Joseph provided, Max lives through all the horrors he endured again. On one such hunt, the team comes across someone hanging from a tree exactly the same way as at the Nazi camps. Additionally, this person had a board around their neck with the word Nakam on it. While Yoachai shoots at the fellow when he suddenly gasps, Max and Michael realize that someone other than them was also going around hunting former Nazis. A minor altercation in the woods one night brings about the arrival of the Jewish Revengers, the team led by Abba Kovner. They call themselves Nakam, which means vengeance in the biblical sense. While they are also looking for revenge for the Nazi atrocities, they do not really bother about confirming sources and looking for specific people. Their rage is instead unleashed on all Germans, including civilians. Since Michael does not agree with this aspect of their revenge, he rejects Kovner's offer to team up. The next morning, Michael informs Max of being called to the Haganah, Palestine's underground military organization, to help with the problems they were facing. Max realizes that Kovner's revengers would be among these problems. After Menashe and Yoachai leave for their next posting, Max convinces Michael to let him continue working together. Telling him about the intel he had on the revengers planning something in Nuremberg, Michael hands over fake identity papers in the name of Paul Baumann and congratulates Max on his induction into the Haganah. Once in Nuremberg, Max goes over to a wall and brands it with the Nakam name. When he spots someone looking up at it the next day, he follows the woman as she goes on her way. He is then ambushed when she enters a building. The woman, Anna, recognizes him as she was the one who had saved his life when the Revengers met the Jewish Brigade in the woods. Disregarding the list Max brought with him, Kovner lets him stay for the night, but says that he will have to leave in the morning. That night, Max is woken up by Anna's nightmares. While she continues sleeping, Max spots a map in her room marked with the major cities of Germany. He wakes up the next morning to see Anna leaving with two other Revengers, Zvi and Belkin. He promptly follows them and is led to Nuremberg's water supply department hiring people to rebuild the plant. He lies about being a plumber and gets a job as Paul Baumann. Seeing that his access to the main well could help them, the Revengers let him work there with them. Max then follows the foreman of the plant, Willie, as he takes the new recruits through to the main turbine. He learns that once they repair the plant, it would be responsible for supplying clean water to the entire city. This information combined with the map he found in Anna's room puts things in perspective and he realizes the impact the operation of the Revengers will have if they successfully poison the water of multiple German cities. When he meets Michael later, he lets him know exactly how big the plan of the Revengers is. Hence, Michael asks Max to work on gaining Kovner's trust, since knowing only the scale of the operation would not be of much help. That night, Max speaks to Kovner about his work at the camp. He says that 
While he always greeted newcomers with a smile and gave them hope, he regrets it now and thinks that it would have been better if he had found a way to warn them to run away instead. Unknown to both of them, Anna hears the conversation as well, and she asks Kovner on his way out whether he trusted Max. He replies that Max has been through the same pain they have. Taking this to be Kovner's trust, Anna speaks to Max on their way to work the next morning. She explains their perspective to him by saying that the Germans stopped being victims of the war when they chose to let the horrors of the camps go on. Back from work one day, Max overhears Anna and Tisvi's conversation about how the maps they had of the plant were outdated. Since Michael's secret message for Max from earlier that day urged him to get Kovner's location soon, Max realizes that he needs to gain the trust of his fellow Revengers. Accordingly, he grabs the opportunity the next day when Willie leaves his maps unguarded for a moment. He observes the map and putting his drawing skills to good use, quickly reproduces it while disguising it as a tree so Willie doesn't doubt him. When he shows the map to the others that evening, Anna is impressed. As Zvi and Belkin discuss that they would have to get things ready before Kovner returns, Max asks where he is. Anna tells him that he is headed to Palestine since he has been unable to secure the poison they needed in Europe. Eventually, the day arrives when the water supply to the city of Nuremberg is restored. When Max finds Anna looking at a young boy happily having some water, he realizes that she must be missing her son. That evening, they go to the movie theater together in an attempt to bring back some normal in their life. However, the mention of the Nazi concentration camps in the newsreel playing at the theater deeply disturbs both of them, and they end up leaving soon after. Meanwhile, Kovner is shown looking for a substance that cannot be detected and is untraceable. When Max meets Michael later that evening, he refuses to give him any information about the plan or about Kovner's location. When he goes back to the Revengers, he learns that the presence of the increasing Allied troops in town, along with Kovner's delay in returning, as per his latest letter, possibly means that it was too late to go through with the operation. However, in a burst of anger, Max insists that they have to keep going. When Anna counters that they couldn't poison the Allies, he suggests that they could go into the tunnels and block the supply to their quarters instead. To work on this suggestion, Max, Anna, and Zvi slip away during work the next day and explore the tunnels underground. They carefully mark the pipelines to be blocked so that poison does not reach the Allies, and instead Instead affects only the locals. However, being underground again brings back memories of Anna's escape from the camp, and she screams for help. Max and Tisvi carry her out before anyone finds them. Back home, they find Belkin waiting to open a letter from Kovner. While Max opens the letter, someone repeatedly knocks on their door. Realizing that the Haganah had found them, they block the door and escape through the window, only to find Michael waiting for them downstairs. When he aims his gun at them, Max buys time by handing over Kovner. Kovner's letter. He tells the others that Kovner was unable to obtain the poison, implying that their plan could not go forward. In an attempt to convince the Revengers, Michael insists that building a new life in a new country would be the right way of getting revenge, instead of being inhuman like the Nazi. After he leaves, Max reveals to the Revengers that he had handed over Kovner's previous letter to Michael, and that his latest letter had actually confirmed that the plan was on track. Elsewhere, having successfully tested the poison on lab rats, Kovner makes his way back to Germany. Meanwhile, Anna sends Zeev and Belkin off to receive Kovner at the port and then begins packing. She tells Max that even though their hurdles had been removed, she didn't find it right anymore to be actively responsible for ending the lives of innocents, especially children. Convinced by Michael's talk of living a new life, she says she intends to head to Palestine to live peacefully among the Jews and even invites Max to join her. When Max refuses, she leaves on her own without looking back. Symbolic of unleashing death itself, Max opens Avraham's jar of death just as Kovner walks in. Heading to the water plant with him, Max realizes that Michael is keeping an eye on them. Michael follows Max even after he splits up with Kovner. However, he disappears down a manhole and continues through the underground tunnels. Thoroughly exhausted, he finally reaches the main turbine. Just as he gets the poison out, Michael gets there and aims his gun at Max. In response, Max punches him and goes on to choke him till he meets his end. Hesitating just a little, he then proceeds to empty the poison into the tank leading to the turbine. Thinking of his beloved 
beloved family, Max then falls into the tank himself. We then see collapsed people all over Nuremberg's main street in the aftermath of the execution of Plan A. Max's voice takes over and wonders what would have actually happened if he had really gone through with it. We then go back to when Max unleashed death. As it turned out, Max had anonymously reported an illegal passenger on board Kovner's ship, leading to his arrest. He then headed home to Palestine in the true form of Revenk to lead a good and honest life. The film ends with the same question it starts with and makes you think what your choice would have been in such a situation. Considering that you lost your family to brutal suffering for no reason and no fault of theirs, what would you do? Would you go ahead with plan A or would you opt for true revenge and make your peace with it?